Let us begin with prayer. Lass uns mit Gebet anfangen. Lieber himmlischer Vater, Lord, we thank you for another new day. Herr, wir danken dir für diesen weiteren Tag. Und wir danken dir für all die Segnungen, die du über uns ergehen lassen hast an diesem heutigen Tag. Lieber Herr, wenn wir jetzt kommen, um dein Wort aufzuschlagen, bitte hilft mein Bruder, seine Punkte darzubringen. May our ears be open and attentive. Und mögest unseren Ohren offen und aufmerksam sein. And our hearts receptive to your word. Und unseren Herzen ähm, empfänglich für dein Wort. And may you send your Holy Spirit, Lord. Mögest du deinen Heiligen Geist uns senden. That it may impress these things deep in our hearts. Dass diese Dinge tief in unserem Herzen einen Eindruck hinterlassen. keep us in the coming test dass sie uns in den kommenden Test bewahren werden. Und wir das alles zu deiner Ehre werden gebeten. Und wir bitten dies im Namen Jesu. Amen. Okay. So, this evening we want to look at this topic about speaking in tongues. Heute Abend wollen wir dieses Thema in Zungen sprechen anschauen. And um, let's first begin in Luke 24. Wir fangen zuerst in Lukas 24 an. And this is obviously a topic where we, what we know is greatly perverted in the Protestant world. Und wir wissen, dass dies ein Thema ist, die sehr verdreht ist in den protestantischen Welt. And yeah, we need to understand it correctly first in the natural application and then obviously also we need to understand what it points to here at the end of the world. Okay. Wir müssen auch natürlich verstehen, was das in ihrem natürlichen ähm, äh, bedeutet und dann was es auch hier am Ende der Welt bedeutet. Okay, so let's first go to Luke 24. Gehen wir zu Lukas 24 zuerst. And um, let's begin in verse 45 to 49. Die 45 bis 49. It says, Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I sent the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Okay, so here they were now to become his witnesses. Right? Here sollen sie seine Zeugen werden. But only when? Aber nur wann? After they received the power from on high. Nachdem right? sie die Kraft aus der Höhe empfangen haben. Okay, and this power from on high is also uh, mentioned in Ephesians. Und diese Kraft aus der Höhe wird auch in Epheserbrief erwähnt. And um, let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Let's go to Epheser 4. Verse 7 uh, to 8. In Versen 7 und 8. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto man. So, what did he give? So, was gab er? Gifts. Yeah, he gave these gifts, right? Diese Geschenke. This was Pentecost when he poured out the Spirit, right? So oh, Pfingsten, als er den Geist ausgegossen hat. Okay, and these are these so-called gifts of the Spirit, right? Das sind diese sogar sogenannten Geistesgaben. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Gehen wir zu 1. Korinther 12. And um, let's begin in verse 25. Fangen wir in Vers 25 an. It says, 
Uh, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. So it speaks about the church being the body of Christ. Right? Now, 25, 26, we read. Uh, now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. So here we see these, these tongues mentioned, right? So Diversity of tongues. Okay. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Okay, so here uh, he speaks about these different gifts that you can get from the Spirit, right? Okay, and uh, if you turn now to Mark chapter 16. There's a similar or it's the same illustration as in Luke 24 when he sends now his disciples. But they were to wait for the power from on high, right? For the gifts. So let's begin in verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. So here we have this speaking with new tongues, right? They shall take up serpents, and if, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Okay, so here we see, that's also here this, this promised gifts, right? Okay, and when we look at the line, and it's not the best line now for these illustrations, but let me just draw it out quickly. So this is the sixth, the seventh. One, two, three, four, five. And that's peace. All right. So <coughs> our test, we know, is will be in here, right? So our test, we know, will be here. So it's not the sun at all, but. Das für uns wäre nicht der Sonntagsgesetz, sondern von 2014. Okay, so, and we know this is a parallel to this year, right? Und wir wissen, dass das hier eine Parallel dazu ist. Okay, and when you go now to Matthew 24, wenn wir jetzt zu Matthäus 24 gehen, and, um, Verse 9. Verse 9. 
It says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. So who comes up here at the sixth place? So who comes here to the sixth plague? False prophets. Right? Prophet. So in principle, there must be false prophets also here. So right? in principle, there must also be false prophets here. Geben. And we saw this morning. We have heute Morgen bereits gesehen. Uh, you come out of Egypt here, right? Das hier aus Ägypten heraus. But Satan always counterfeits it, right? Aber Satan fälscht diese. For these three days, they end here. You come out of Egypt. So diese drei Tage, sie kommen hier zu Ende, kommst du aus Ägypten heraus. The latter rain fills you, right? Das Spätregen füllt dich. Which is the gifts. Right? Die Gaben eben. But Satan, he counterfeits these three days and says, you come out of Egypt here, right? Satan fälscht in diesen drei Tagen, sagst du kommst aus Ägypten hier heraus. Okay. That would be the time of peace here, right? Das wäre der Zeit des Friedens hier sein. Okay. So, therefore he always says, at the beginning of the time of trouble, you receive the gifts. Right? So, er sagt immer zu Beginn der Zeit des Trübsals, dass du die Gaben erhältst. Okay. And therefore, uh, these false prophets, when they rise up here or there, so, deswegen diese falschen Propheten, wenn sie hier aufkommen oder auch hier, uh, they will claim to have received the Holy Spirit. Right? Sie werden behaupten, bereits den Heiligen Geist empfangen zu haben. Okay. So, and with the Holy Spirit, these gifts will come. Okay. Mit der Heiligen Geist wird diese Gaben dann kommen. Okay. So, let's therefore we need to understand these things properly. Deswegen müssen wir diese Dinge richtig verstehen. So, let's go now um, to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. So, gehen wir zu 1. Korinther Kapitel 14. Because that's this chapter where Paul speaks about speaking in tongues. Okay? Hier ist der Kapitel, wo Paulus darüber spricht, in Zungen zu sprechen. 1 Corinthians 14. 1. Korinther 14. Let us begin in verse 1. Fangen wir in Vers 1 an. It says, Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that he may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, Howbeit, in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Right, so here he speaks now about these tongues, okay? So here spricht er über diesen Zungenreden. And it's part of the spiritual gifts. Teil der geistlichen Gaben. Um, and it says here that when you speak in this tongue, no man understands you, but you speak in the spirit mysteries. Right? So it says here, when you in a tongue speak, no one understands you, but you speak in the mysteries. You speak not unto man, but unto God. It says, okay. nicht zu Menschen, sondern zu Gott. But it says here, but he that prophesieth speaketh unto man to edification and exhortation and comfort. So if you prophesy, this is something people can understand and this will edify them. Okay. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the Church. I would that ye all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. So, when you speak in tongues, how is it only an edification for the church? So, when you in Zungen sprichst, wie ist es nur eine Erbauung für die Gemeinde? Just like in this. So, wie du in Englisch sprichst und er übersetzt in Deutsch. Yeah, if you have an interpreter, it says it. Right? So, wenn du einen Übersetzer hast, sag es. Because tongue is a language. Yes, okay, yeah, we come to this, okay? Yes, so, verse, verse 6. Verse 6. It says, Now, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I shall speak to you either by re revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine? And even things without life giving sound, whether pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harped? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? 
So likewise ye, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For you shall speak into the air. Okay, so if you speak in these tongues, there's nobody that can interpret you. So, bis Vers 9. Also, wenn du in diesen Zungen sprichst und es niemanden gibt, der dich übersetzen kann, they won't hear the warning. Ja, yeah, then, yes, then you just speak in vain, right? You speak in the air. Okay. Sprichst du für nichts, also du sprichst nur in den Luft hinein. Just imagine I would speak Chinese, okay? So, stellt euch mal jetzt gerade vor, ich werde Chinesisch jetzt sprechen. Nobody would understand me, right? Niemand yeah. wird mich verstehen. I mean, it's the wife of death warning, so you got to speak it clearly, right? Mm -hmm. Also, das ist Joel und Ezekiel. Das ist ein Leben oder Tod Warnung. Also du musst es klar sprechen, so wie Ezekiel oder Joel. Yes. Okay. So therefore let's first look at this natural application of speaking in tongues. Right? Ich lasst uns zuerst diese natürliche Anwendung von in Zungen zu sprechen. So let's go. Keep your finger here in 1 Corinthians. Let's go to Genesis chapter 10. Unter den Platz in 1. Korinther und gehen wir zu 1. Mose 10. Let's Look at the Bible, what the Bible says, what tongues are. Okay. Schauen wir in die Bibel, was die Bibel sagt, was Zungen sind. Uh, Genesis 10, verse 20. 1. Mose 10, Vers 20. This speaks now about here the, the sons of Noah after the flood. Okay. Und spricht hier über die so Söhne von Noah nach dem Sintflut. And here it says, for instance, uh, these are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, in their countries and in their nations. So what do we see here? So what can we here see? The languages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So before that, there were all kind of sons listed, and then it summarizes and says, these are the sons of Ham after their families, after their tongue, in their countries and in their nations. Right. So zuvor ist, sind sie alle aufgelistet und hier in Vers 20, die sind die Söhne Hams nach ihren Familien, ihren Zungen und ihren Ländern und ihren Nationen. Yes. And also when you go to verse uh, 31, wir zu 31 gehen, because they, uh, uh, so between verse 20 and verse 31 you have all the sons of Shem. Okay? Zwischen Vers 20 und 31 gibt es die ganze Söhne Shems. And then it says in verse 31, sagt das in Vers 31, These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, after their nations. Okay? So, it just shows you, you know, these tongues, or, the, or these nations had their tongues, right? It's like, no, that all these nations had their tongues. Okay, when you also go now to um, Revelation chapter 14. So when we go here to Offenbarung chapter 14. Gehen. And verse 6. And verse 6. Speaking about the first angel's message. Ich über der erste Engelsbotschaft. It says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people. So the everlasting gospel goes to whom? So the ewige uh, Evangelium geht zu wem? Nation, kindred, tongue. Yes. Okay. Every nation, kindred, tongue, people. So people. Nation, Abstammung, Zunge und Volk. Also, when you go to Revelation chapter 17. Auch wenn wir zu Offenbarung 17 gehen. Vers 15. Und Vers 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Right? So the waters are these nations with their different tongues. Die Wassern sind diese Nationen mit ihren verschiedenen Zungen. And you also go to Deuteronomy 28. 5. Mose 28. Kapitel 28, die Verse 49 und 50. It says, The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, 
as swift as the eagle flieth. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. A nation of fierce countenance, and, uh, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shall favor to the young. So who was this nation? So who was this nation? Rome, right? Rome. What does it say about them? Was sagt es über sie? Yeah, they won't understand their tongue, right? Ihre Zunge nicht verstehen. Okay, so because they spoke Latin. Okay. Sie haben Latein gesprochen. Okay, good. So we can see, therefore, clearly uh, the the tongue in the Bible represents the language, right? Wir können klar sehen, in der Bibel eine Zunge stellt eine Sprache dar. Okay, now let's go also to Acts chapter two. Dann gehen wir auch jetzt zur Apostelgeschichte Kapitel zwei. This speaks about uh, Pentecost. Hier spricht es über Pfingsten. Acts 2, verse 1. Apostelgeschichte 2 und Vers 1. It says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. So what came upon them? So what came over them? Yeah, fiery tongues, right? Fiery tongues. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, so they could not speak in other tongues because the Spirit was not speaking through them, right? Sie konnten in andere Zungen sprechen, weil der Geist durch sie hier sprach. Okay, just keep your finger here. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 13, 14 again. So, halte den Platz hier und geh zurück zu 1. Korinther 14. Just to compare this. Um dies zu vergleichen. Let's read verse 2 again. Vers 2 nochmal lesen. It says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, or unknown language, right? Eine unbekannte Zunge oder Sprache. Speaketh not unto man, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Right? So the spirit is the one that gives you utterance, right? The Geist is it that dich um, the Sprache gibt. Yeah, because for instance, if you suddenly can speak Chinese, it's not you that you know, can speak Chinese, it's the spirit speaking through you. Right? Wenn du plötzlich Chinesisch sprechen kannst, das bist nicht du, der auf einmal Chinesisch kann, sondern der Geist, der durch dich spricht. Okay. It's a gift es of the Holy Ghost. Eben right? eine Gabe des Geistes. So let's go back to X, keep your finger in 1 Corinthians, let's go back to X2. Halte den Platz hier und geh zurück zur Apostelgeschichte 2. And let's continue verse 5. Vers 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. So where did they come from, these Jews? So, wo kamen diesen Juden her? Every nation. Yeah, every nation and tongue and kindred, right? Aus jeder Nation und Zunge und Abstand. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. So here we can see, you know, yeah, it's their own language, right? And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans, and how hear we every man in our own tongue when we were born. So, yeah, they heard them in their own language, but they heard them in their own tongue, it says, right? Sie in ihrer eigenen Sprache, und hier sagt es in ihren eigenen Zunge. Parthians, and Medes, and Elamites, and dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia, uh, Phrygia, and uh, Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? 
Okay, <clears throat> so they hear now them speaking in their language, right? So they hear now how they in their mother language. All right, so when you go back to First Corinthians 14, so when we go back to First Corinthians 14, then. Uh, therefore, we can see uh, these speaking tongues is not what the Protestants make it to be. Okay. So we can see that this in Zorn speaking is not what the Protestants make it to be. Let's read this next quote here by Sister White in the live stream group. So, let's read this quote from Ellen White in the live stream group. It's from First Testimonies. This is from 1T. It says, Some of these persons have exercises which they call gifts and say that the Lord has placed them in the church. They have an unmeaning gibberish which they call the unknown tongue, which is unknown not only by man but by the Lord and all heaven. Such gifts are manufactured by men and women aided by the great deceiver. And so it's this, uh, uh, this unmeaning gibberish, what she says. This is this bedeutungslose geblabberer. Okay. Geplapper. Yes. And I don't know if you have ever seen this, this is like, you know, when. Yeah, it's just like this, unmeaning gibberish. I don't know if you have ever seen this, but it is genau so, also bedeutungslose geplapper. She goes on to say, Sie sagt weiter. Fanaticism, false excitement, false talking in tongues, and noisy exercises have been considered gifts which God has placed in the church. Some have been deceived here. The fruits of all this have not been good. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Fanaticism and noise have been considered special evidences of faith. Some are not satisfied with a meeting unless they have a powerful and happy time. They work for this and get up an excitement of feeling. But the influence of such meet meetings is not beneficial. When the happy flight of feeling is gone, they sink lower than before the meeting because their happiness did not come from the right source. The most profitable meetings for spiritual advancements are those which are characterized with solemnity and deep searching of heart, each seeking to know himself and earnestly and in deep humility seeking to learn of Christ. Okay, so that's, she speaks about these, these, yeah, these worships that are just tailoring your feelings, your flesh, right? She spricht über diese Anbetungszeit, die nur ähm, deine Gefühle ähm, auffüllen, also dein Fleisch. Um, and they leave you in a worse condition than you were before. Okay. Lassen dich in einen noch schlechteren Zustand als zuvor. But the true worship is where you search your heart, where we allow the word to convict you, right? Das wahre Anbetung ist, wenn du dein Herz durchforscht und du erlaubst, das Wort dich zu überführen. Okay, now let's go also to the next quote. Gehen wir zum nächsten Zitat. It's a, it's a well known quote. Ein bekannter Zitat. About the hot coal that touches your lips. Okay. Diese heiße Kohle, die den Lippen berührt. Because this was Isaiah's experience, right? And this was the Erfahrung von Jesaja. Okay, it says here, after an earnest season of prayer, testimonies were born in quick succession by nearly all present. It was a profitable meeting to all, all uh, to us all. Although of different nationalities, our hearts were united on worshiping the one only true God. Okay, so apparently in this meeting there were different nationalities present. Okay. In diese Treffen gab es verschiedene Nationalitäten, die anwesend waren. It is when uh, it is with an earnest longing that I look forward to the time when the events of the day of Pentecost shall be repeated with even greater power than on that occasion. Yeah, and this is when the latter rain is poured out, right? Hier ist es, wo der Spätregen ausgegossen ist. Pentecost will repeat. Pfingsten wird wiederholen. John says, I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. That's the angel of Revelation 18. Okay. Coming down, right? Then, as at the Pentecostal season, the people will hear the truth spoken to them, every man in his own tongue. Okay, so 
everybody will hear the message again in their own language. Right? Jeder wird die Botschaft wieder hören in seiner eigenen Sprache. God can breathe new life into every soul that sincerely desires to serve him and can touch the lips with a life call from off the altar and cause them to become eloquent with his praise. So that's this life call that will touch your lips, right? Das ist die lebendige Kohle, die deine Lippen berühren werden. Thousands of voices will be imbued with the power to speak forth the wonderful truths of God's word. The stammering tongue will be unloosed and the timid will be made strong to bear courageous testimony to the truth. May the Lord help his people to cleanse the soul temple from every defilement and to maintain such a close connection with him that they may be partakers of the latter rain when it shall be poured out. Okay. And thus, it will be poured out here, at least in some measure, right? So for us, for us, it is here ausgegossen werden, zumindest in eine gewisse Maß. Okay. So, and um, yes, and the Lord will give gifts back to his church. Okay. And the Herr wird Gaben seine Gemeinde wiedergeben. As soon as he has a clean temple, he will fill it. Okay. Sobald dass er eine reine Tempel hat, wird er sie füllen. Yeah, just imagine, yeah, you, again, suddenly God is lively among his people. He will work miracles. Okay. Stellt euch das nur vor, dass Gott wieder lebendig unter seinem Volk Wundern wirken wird. Okay. But we know Satan will bring in a counterfeit first. Right? Wir wissen aber, dass Satan zuerst eine Fälschung hineinbringen wird. Okay. So, now let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. So, gehen wir zu unseren Bibeln, 1. Korinther 14 zurück. So, Paul is basically rebuking here the Corinthians because they were unorderly in the use of the gift of tongues. Okay? So, Paulus tadelt die Korinther hier, weil sie in Unordnung oder unordentlich mit der Gabe des Zungen umgegangen sind. Okay. Um, because if you speak suddenly in a different language, so of no profit if it cannot be interpreted, right? Wenn du plötzlich in eine fremde Sprache sprichst, das nutzt niemanden was, es sei denn, dass jemand sie übersetzt. Okay, so that's why, let's go back to verse 9. So deswegen gehen wir zurück, Vers 9. It says, so likewise he, except he utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Now, so many voices, many languages in the world, right? So viele Sprachen gibt es in der Welt. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. So it will just be somebody you whose language you simply don't understand. Okay. Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. So here he tells us spiritual gifts are only for the purpose to edify the church. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with understanding also. Else, when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say Amen at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest? For thou verily givest thanks well, but the other is not edified. I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than all, with ye all. Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding, that by my, uh, that by my voice I might teach others also, than ten thousand words in an unknown tongue. Brethren, be not children in understanding, howbeit in malice be children, but in understanding be men. So Paul is all about, uh, if you don't understand, it has no benefit at all. Okay. Okay. 
and and that's the most important point for him. Okay. And for him is that the most point. Verse 21. Verse 21. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. So here in verse 21 he now quotes the law, right? So here in verse 21 er zitiert den Herrn. No, the law. Das Gesetz. And where does he quote it from? Und von wo zitiert er das? Yeah, Isaiah 28, right? So, let's read here again what he quotes and then we go to Isaiah 28. So, verse 21 again. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will they not hear me, say the Lord. So, keep your finger here. Halte den Platz hier. Let's go to Isaiah 28. Gehen wir zu Jesaja 28. Let's begin in verse 9. Fangen wir in Vers 9 an. It says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. So it's about giving you doctrine, giving you understanding, right? For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here little and there little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. How will he speak to them? With another tongue. Okay. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith he may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Okay. So, so what is it? So what is it? Yes, the refreshing. And it's the, therefore the... Let her ring. Yes, it's Pentecost. Okay. So it shows you that once you receive the outpouring, you now speak in another tongue to the people. Right? Okay. But this brings us now to this spiritual meaning. Okay. Yeah, because um, Let's go now to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Gehen wir zu 1. Korintherbrief Kapitel 2. And I'm also open to understand this more fully, but that's at least what I understand at the moment. Ich bin offen, das völliger zu verstehen, aber das hier ist, was ich, was ich so weit verstehe. 1. Corinthians chapter 2. And um, let's begin in verse 7. It says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So, It's the, it, yeah, it's the hidden wisdom, right? Yeah, it's the mystery. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we, we come shortly. Okay. So, um, so it's here this mystery that you speak now. Right? And who doesn't understand it? Yes, but it says here in verse 8. In verse 8, the princes of this world, right? Prinzen dieser Welt. Because it goes on to say, verse 9. Sagt weiter in Vers 9. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of men the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit serveth all, all things, ye the deep things of God. So. Just <clears throat> And now verse 12. Verse 12 jetzt. 
Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Right? So the, these are the two spirits here, the spirit of the world and the spirit of God. Right? Sind diese zwei Geistern hier, Geist der Welt und Geist Gottes. Okay, and, <coughs> and we saw it's the spirit that reveals this mystery to you. Und right? wir haben gelesen, dass es der Geist ist, der, der dir dieses Geheimnis offenbart. It's the latter rain, right? Das ist der and this is then a new tongue that you will speak to the people with. Okay? Just go back again to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Geht zurück zu 1. Korinther 14 wieder. Let's read verse 2. Vers 2. It says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Right? So when you speak in this new tongue, so Isaiah 28, okay? Zunge sprichst, Isaiah 28. What, who will not understand you? Wer wird dir nicht verstehen? Yeah, the world, man will not understand you, right? Welt, man wird dich nicht verstehen. Because you now speak in the spirit mysteries, right? Du jetzt im Geiste Geheimnisse sprichst. Those things that the spirit revealed unto you, okay? Die Sachen, die der Geist dir geoffenbart hat. Who do you need now in order that people can understand you? So, wer brauchst du jetzt, sodass die Menschen dich verstehen können? Interpreter, right? Mm -hmm. Ausleger. Okay. Übersetzer. Somebody who can now... Uh, that people can now, in the, with the carnal minds, they need an interpreter, right? Because you speak, speak spiritual things. So, in ihrem fleischlichen Verstand, sie brauchen eine Übersetzung, weil du redest in geistigen Sachen. Okay, so let's go to 1 John. <coughs> Gehen wir zu 1. Johannes. In 1. Corinthians, spiritual gifts, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it lists them, right? Um, I'm trying to remember where exactly. Um, Prophesying teachings. Yes, no, it's, in, it's in chapter 12. No, it was in chapter 12, the last two yes. or three verses. Yeah. Um, no, there's one that specifically said, I think it's maybe the end of chapter 13. Twelve, chapter twelve, verse nine to ten. Nine to ten. Yes, second chapter twelve. What did you say? Verse uh, chapter twelve, verse eight to ten. I guess. And that's not what he means. No, there's one that says, "But I'd rather." Mm -hmm. Did you all prophesy? Yeah, no, that's uh, chapter fourteen, verse one. Because it, it's like a contradiction, right? It says that rather that you may prophesy, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God, for no man understandeth. So that if you're prophesying, you're unfolding God's word, right? So mm -hmm. how is it suddenly when you speak in tongues? Is it a different form of prophesying? <laughs> so I'm saying it's like a, that's like a, con a contradiction. Mm -hmm. A good question. Yeah. I don't. I don't know exactly how to answer this at the moment. Yeah. But I mean, you can see these points, right? Isaiah 28 clearly says, you know, speaking in a new tongue, right? When you speak, when you know, uh, speak line upon line in the when you receive the refreshing, right? 
yeah. and it doesn't it doesn't mean I mean it means also that you can probably speak new languages right literally but it doesn't mean it in the spiritual sense right no but in Ezekiel 3 this is what I'm making it says go speak to this people it's not a hard language yes. you're speaking them because the this language they should understand I'm not saying you the Gentiles yes. so yeah, I'm just trying to marry these thoughts up. Yes, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I understand what you want to say, but I mean, I just go here with the, the weight of evidence as I see it at the moment, and I, I know it seems like a little contradiction, but I don't know. Uh, obviously, it can't be a contradiction, right? So it's something we probably don't really understand yet. But let's just continue looking at it. First John chapter 4. So as to Johannes 4. First John, he said. Yes. Okay, uh, let's read verse 4 to 6. Verse 4 to 6. It says, Ye are of God, little children. And have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak, uh, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth us not. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Right? So what do we see here? What can we here see? Yeah, these two different tongues, right? Two different tongues. Yeah, the one is this worldly tongue, yeah. and the other is the heavenly tongue, right? Is this worldly tongue and the other the heavenly? Okay, so in the worldly mind cannot understand the spiritual or the heavenly tongue, right? The worldly understand can the spiritual or the heavenly tongue not understand. Also, when you go to John. Chapter 3. Also, Johannes 3 again. I mean, it's also the same with the magicians and astrologers. They're not able to interpret the vision. Yes. In the medical. Because you're asking about the capital. I'm just saying that. And yes, they're yes. not able to interpret the vision. So, mm -hmm. yes. so let's go to John chapter 3. Johannes chapter 3. And um, let's here read beginning verse 10. verse When Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, right? Jesus to Nicodemus sprach. He must be born again, he says. Uh, let's even begin verse 10, uh, 9, sorry. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? And what did the what did the people say at Pentecost? Was sagten das Volksmenge zu Pfingsten? Yeah, what meaneth this? Right? Was bedeutet das? And what, when the manna came from heaven, what did they say? What is it? Das manna vom yeah. Himmel herkam, was haben sie zuerst gesagt? And what is it? Right? Was ist das? And Christ came in the triumphal entry, what did they say? Was Christus yeah. kam bei der triumphalen Einzug, yeah, was this? haben sie gesagt? Right? Wer ist dies? Okay, so verse 10. Verse 10. Mm. Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily I say unto, uh, verily, verily I say unto thee, we speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Okay, so the two spirits. Yeah, Christ even used earthly things. And he didn't believe. How would, would he understand if he even spoke about heavenly things, right? Christus nutzt macht Gebrauch von irdische Dinge und sie glauben nicht. Also wie sollten sie denn glauben, wenn er von himmlischen Sachen redet? So how did he use earthly things? So wie hat er irdische Sachen benutzt? Yeah, parables. Right? Gleichnis. Okay, so the parables were this interpreter in order to make you understand spiritual things, right? So, die Gleichnissen war diese Übersetzer, so dass du den geistliche Sachen verstehen konntest. Uh, 
because it always reaches your natural mind first to lead you then to the spiritual, right? Es führt dein oder spricht deinen natürlichen Verstand zuerst an, um dir zu geistlichen Verständnis zu führen. This is what Jesus then continues doing here in verse 14, right? Das was Jesus macht denn weiter hier in Vers 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So he again points him to the type to make him understand now the antitype. Right? So er weist wieder auf den Typus zurück, so dass sie jetzt ein Verständnis von Antitypus haben. Okay, so and this is basically uh, the job uh, of us because. Und das ist im Grunde unser Werk. Uh, uh, let's see, where is this? Um, mm -hmm. Let's go to Job chapter 33. Let's go to Job 33. Verse 22 to 24. I mean, if we look at this already at, at the message we have already now, right? It's already another language to uh, for other people, right? Yeah. And unless you really show them then step by step what this means, they will never understand, right? Okay, um, let's begin in verse 22. Verse 22. It says, Yea, his soul draweth near unto the grave, and his life to the destroyers. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness, then he is gracious unto him, and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. Okay, so... Who's this interpreter here? So where is this übersetzer here? I mean, if you if you take this verse and you parallel it to um, Ecclesiastes chapter seven, it would be Christ. Yes. Yeah. Wenn diesen Vers mit Prediger sieben vergleichen würdest, wäre das Christus. Yeah, one among a thousand, right? Is Christ. Ein unter ein tausend ist es Christus. Yes, he's this messenger, right? Er ist dieser Botschafter. Okay, uh, maybe just let's begin in verse 14, then we have maybe a better context of what these verses mean. Okay. It says, For God speaketh once, yet twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon man, and slumberings upon the bed. So, who's this? Where is this in verse 15? Nebuchadnezzar, for instance, right? Or Pharaoh, right? Okay, they slept and they had this dream. Okay. Verse 16. Then he openeth the ears of man and seeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. Right? So he gave them these things in order to, to humble their pride. Right? He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. He is chastened also with pain upon his bed and the multitude of his bones with strong pain, so that his life abhorreth bread and his soul dainty meat. His flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen, and his bones that, they, that were not seen stick out. Yea, his soul draweth near unto the grave and his life to the destroyers. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among the thousand, to show, man, uh, sh to show unto man his uprightness, then he is gracious unto him, and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit, I have found a ransom. So how can he be delivered? So we can er befreit werden. He needs a deliverer. Yeah, he needs an interpreter, right? He braucht einen Übersetzer. So Daniel. And uh, Joseph, there were these interpreters, right? Daniel and Joseph were these um, übersetzer. 
they could interpret the dream. Right? Now just go to Daniel chapter 2. Okay. Daniel 2 verse 16. It says, Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Okay. He would be then this interpreter. Yeah. Let's go also to Acts chapter 8. Yes. Das Gegenteil dazu wäre diese also weisen Männer, die nicht imstande war, diese Sprache zu deuten. Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Aus Geschichte 8, Vers 26. It says, And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under uh, Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and striving in his chariot, uh, sitting. sitting in his chariot, uh, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit saith unto Philip, Go near, and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. So what did Philip become to him? So what is Philip An interpreter, right? An auslayer, an übersetzer. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearers, so openeth he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So what was he reading? Was hat er gelesen? Isaiah 53, right? Isaiah 53. Reading about the cross here, okay? Lies über den Kreuz. He was trying to understand the revelation, okay? Er versuchte die Offenbarung zu verstehen. Couldn't understand it. Er konnte es nicht verstehen. Vers 34. Vers 34. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. So here we see, uh, why did he get baptized? Yeah, because he received the revelation, right? So it's not like yeah, you can just baptize anybody just like this, okay? This is not so that you just Leute so nach Lust und Laune taufen kannst. Many people say this, right? They use this story and say, yeah, look, he just get baptized right away, okay? So viele nutzen diese Geschichte, sagen, schaut, er ist nur sofort getauft worden. Yeah, faith was revealed, right? Glaube ist geoffenbart worden. Okay, so. Therefore, we can see yeah, that yeah, it's, it's an unknown tongue, this revelation is an unknown tongue, and people will not understand it unless you interpret it to them. Okay? Because it's a mystery, right? And I mean, when we, for instance, are now among us, when we are, for example, under us, yeah, when we speak about these things, yeah, for us, we understand this language, at least to what we understand now. Okay? So when we talk 
But if somebody new would come now into this room, Aber wenn jemand neu in diesen Raum hineinkommen würde, yeah, and he would listen to us speak about these lines and these things, und er würde uh, zuhören, wie wir über diese Linien und all diese Sachen sprechen he würden, he thinks you're out of your mind. Okay? Er wird denken, dass wir den Sinn verloren hätten. So it's just like with the literal speaking in tongues, they people thought a bunch of crazy people. Okay. Das ist genauso wie bei des buchstäblichen Sprechen in Zungen. Die haben gedacht damals, dass sie auch ein Haufen Verrückten waren. Yeah. And therefore it shows us yeah, that yeah, there's somebody new coming new. We need to make sure that we also need to somehow yeah, help them to grasp things. Okay, because else they will not be edified at all. Okay. Deswegen, wenn jemand Neues unter uns ist, dann müssen wir uns bemühen, dass sie letztendlich verstehen, wovon wir sprechen. Ansonsten werden sie überhaupt nicht davon äh, aufgebaut werden. Deswegen haben wir immer gesagt, also bringt nichts neue Leute zu unseren Camp Meetings, das ist eben nicht schlau. And it's probably also some kind of an allegory that the Lord ordained it in this ministry that we always have an interpreter here, right? Und es hat sicherlich eine gewisse Allegorie dass in unserem Ministry, dass wir immer ähm, jemanden da haben, der übersetzt. Ja, so in the sense, I mean, it's not a literal interpretation, but yeah, it's just an allegory how the Lord wants us to yeah, have a spiritual interpreter also one day, right? Ich meine, hier und jetzt ist es nur eine buchstäbliche ähm, Übersetzung, aber es ist immer eine Allegorie ähm, davon, wie der Herr in der Zukunft dass der Herr haben möchte, dass immer jemand da ist, der übersetze. Spiritual interpreter. Geistlich. Yeah. Mhm. Okay, because last verse for tonight, Matthew chapter 13. So, letzten Vers für heute Abend, Matthäus Kapitel 13. Speaking about the sower when it's sown on the wayside, right? Und spricht über der Seemann, wenn es am Wegrand gesät wird. Vers 18 to 19. Die Verse 18 und 19. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the Lord kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received the seed by the wayside. Okay, so if you don't understand it, so wenn du sie nicht verstehst, it's as if you never received anything. Right? Es ist wie, als wenn du nie irgendetwas erhalten hättest. Mm -hmm. exactly. yeah. Deswegen solltest du bitten. Yes, and that's the, exactly. Yeah. So, the, the, let's say the responsibility of those that don't understand, they need to ask that they can get an interpretation. Right? So, die Verantwortung, dass wenn jemand nicht verstehe, liegt bei derjenige, der nicht versteht, der soll bitten, so dass er dann eine Auslegung erhalten kann. Yeah. But at the same time, Paul also says, you know, we should also make sure that when we see somebody. Make sure that he receives an interpreter. Aber okay. zugleich sagt Paulus, dass wenn wir jemand sieht, der nicht versteht, dann sollten wir auch Sorge dafür tragen, dass er eine Übersetzung bekommt. Amen. Amen. Okay. Good. So, now I hope that we can now better understand the literal and the spiritual application of this. Okay. Ich hoffe, dass wir jetzt besser das buchstäbliche und das geistliche Anwendung hiervon verstehen. Of speaking in tongues das in Zungen sprechen eben. And, yeah, I think we will also understand it more fully as we go on. Und ich glaube, wir werden das noch völliger verstehen, wenn wir so vorangehen. Amen. Amen. Okay, then let's close with prayer round. Und das ist mit unserer Gebet schon geschlossen.